uh, Senator Toomey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to our witnesses. It's been a while since uh, our committee has held a hearing on the insurance industry, and so I welcome uh, the occasion uh, this morning. There are a few topics in particular I'd like to uh, touch for the past 150 years. When it comes to insurance, the federal government has a really a very extremely limited regulatory role, and I see little need to expand that. The system works well for consumers and for the industry. And that's one reason we need to pay close attention to efforts to develop and implement international insurance standards by international bodies. In particular, I worry, and I'm not alone, that the insurance capital standards, or the ICS, currently being developed by the International Association of Insurance Supervisors is incompatible with the U.S. insurance market. There's widespread concern that the ICS is too sensitive to short-term fluctuations in markets and certain asset categories and does not take into account uh, certain aspects of the assets that insurers hold. The result is that the implementation of ICS in its current form would harm the availability of long-term insurance products that Americans rely on for financial security. Our U.S. representatives at IAIS need to make sure that ICS works for the U.S. market and by not allowing the proposal to go forward until it does. Next, I'd like to touch on some troubling efforts to use our financial system to address climate change. Now, there are some liberal activists who want to pressure insurance companies and other financial institutions to deny services to traditional energy companies and other carbon-intensive industries. Such efforts are profoundly misguided. Addressing the difficult challenges posed by global warming requires political decisions involving important trade-offs. We've seen those trade-offs in action in recent months. Soaring energy prices, European nations have made plans to reopen coal power plants and extend the lives of nuclear plants. Likewise, in the U.S., we've seen the Biden administration's hostility to new energy production contribute to shockingly high gasoline prices. That's a painful consequence of policy choices. In a democratic society, those choices and the trade-offs associated with them must be made by elected representatives who are accountable to the American people, not unelected act activists, bureaucrats, or insurance executives, for that matter. To be sure, insurers face financial risks in the form of natural disasters. After all, that's a core business of the property and casualty insurance industry. Insurers must be allowed to set premiums that accurately reflect these risks. And to the extent that climate change exacerbates these risks, then they're going to need to adjust their prices accordingly. Higher premiums are an important signal to policyholders that warn of increased risks of fire or flood or earthquake or other peril. Further, they create a financial incentive to mitigate risk, which leads to safer and more resilient communities and society. Bottom line is that a well-functioning insurance industry is quite capable of addressing the natural disaster risks that it faces today and in the future. I'd also like to address plans to create a federally guaranteed pandemic risk insurance program. <coughs> Excuse me. As proposed, this program would be akin to the Terrorism Risk Insurance Program, or TRIA. As a reminder, TRIA mandates that insurers offer terrorism insurance, and the, in the event of an attack, the federal government bears an increasing share of the cost of claims depending on the severity. Well, a similar program for pandemics would be very, very problematic. First of all, it's hard to imagine that insurers are well-equipped to quickly distribute hundreds of billions or maybe even trillions of federal dollars. Recall that in a matter of months, the Paycheck Protection Program distributed over half a trillion dollars via the banking system, but banks and other financial institutions participated on a voluntary basis. Compare that to the disastrous claims processing after Superstorm Sandy. But more importantly, a federally guaranteed pandemic risk insurance program would encourage state and local governments to impose economically devastating shutdowns in the future. Such a program would in fact incentivize state and local policymakers to quickly impose lockdowns with their jurisdictions with the assurance that the federal government risk insurance program will bail them out. Instead of considering policies that will facilitate future lockdowns that repeat the mistakes of the past, we should be thinking about future mitigation measures that don't crush business, workers, and the economy, and don't harm our children's educations. Well, let me conclude with this observation. A well-functioning insurance industry is a critical component of economic prosperity and financial security for all Americans. Everyone will be better off if we resist activist efforts to use insurance as a tool to pursue social policy goals. Insurance is not a legitimate tool, as some have suggested, to decarbonize the economy, to infringe on Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens, or to mitigate wealth inequality. Let's have insurers stick to the business of insurance. I look forward to discussing these issues today.